I'm here today with Raven Magwood, and she is a teenage author, a motivational speaker, and a TV show host. At 19, I'm going to brag about you for just a minute. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> At 19 years old, she has accomplished more than most do in a lifetime. When she was only just 11 years old, she was a national gymnastics champion and published her first book. It was called On to Victory, The Winning Edge. By 13, she published her second book. It's called Double Sided. That is now being made into a movie. I want to hear more about that. And at 15, she was a state title holder in track and field competing nationally. At 16, she had graduated from high school number one in her class with a 5.1 GPA. And now she has a new book entitled The Seven Practices of Exceptional Student Athletes. So welcome. We went on to write The Seven Practices of Exceptional Student Athletes. And what are some of the some seven practices? And give us a little description. Well, the first practice I call Visualize the End Result. And really just means to set goals and own it. You have to know where you want to go if you're going to get there. I tell people that all the time. So visualize what you want out of life. And then you can start working to achieve what you want. Second is called bring the house down. And really that just means work hard in everything. Whether it's school, practice, a competition, whether it's just in life. You have to get that effort. Because I can guarantee you there are no traffic jams on the extra mile. You have to work hard. You have to go above and beyond. So that's the second one, bring the house down. The third one is recognize your true strength. And that, as we were talking earlier, is that mental strength. Your body cannot do anything unless your mind tells it to. You cannot give up unless your mind tells you to. You can say, I'm going to get down and do 25 push-ups, and what happens? You do 25 push-ups. But what if your mind told you to do 50? You would have done 50. And I tell kids that all the time, like set the bar high and understand that your mind is a powerful thing. Be positive with yourself because it's going to show up physically. The fourth practice is to use a timeout. And really this means to prioritize, set your schedule, use your time management skills because you can't do everything at one time. But you have to learn to prioritize what's the most important thing for me to do right now. And then you get and you do it. Does timeout really yeah. mean timeout also? Did you schedule in downtime, relax time? Exactly. exactly. Timeout also means take that time to relax and take care of yourself. Because so sometimes, a lot of times actually, you're a student athlete, even parents who run and run and run and do this and do that. And we don't take that time to sit down and unwind. We don't take that time to relax. We don't take that time to renew ourselves spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally. And I do touch on that in the book as well. Take that time out to prioritize, use time management skills, but also take care of yourself. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. So I um, get going. The fifth practice is called cut your losses. And really with cut your losses, I mean remove yourself from negative people and negative situations. You're not going to achieve success if you keep hanging around the same group of friends who tells you you're not going to achieve success. Right. You just won't do it. You need to surround yourself with people who are going to uplift you and tell you that you can do it. And when times get hard, they keep you in a positive mentality and they're going to help you achieve that next level. So you have to cut your losses. People don't realize that other people can, are like infectious diseases. You know, if they're negative, we're going to start to be negative. But if we're around positive people, we're going to be positive. And so I definitely think that's a very important practice, cut your losses. Sixth practice, go back to square one. Really this means when you make a mistake, you learn from it and you start right back up. We make mistakes all the time. But that's what allows us to become the people that we're supposed to be. We just cannot give up. We have to keep moving forward. And with that not giving up brings us to the seventh practice. It's called never throw in the towel. And of course, don't give up no matter what. And in my book, I outline stories of athletes and other famous people who didn't give up no matter what. And one of my favorite quotes is actually by Michael Jordan. And he said, in my career, I've missed over 9,000 shots. I've lost over 300 games, 26 times. I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and I missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life and that is why I succeed. I tell kids that all the time you will have setbacks, you will have failures, things will happen that you don't want to happen in your life that you cannot give up. And in sports, that's just part of playing sports is that exactly. you, you have mistakes, you have chokes, you have setbacks. Exactly. There's, exactly. Not, there's not one sport that you're going to win every time or be successful every time. You're completely right. But how do you use that loss 
to keep moving forward and to win the next time. You have to look, what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? And you take that into the next competition. Right. Think how boring it would be if you were successful every time. There would be... <laughs> it would, I mean, it sounds good in practice, but I think it would be very boring after a while if you're constantly winning and so far ahead of everybody else. It would be, because where do you improve or what new things could you do? <laughs> right, what pushes you? Go to sportsmentaltoughness.com to get your free video training and guided visualization MP3 on how to perform under pressure. I'm Craig Sigal, the Mental Toughness Trainer.